analog to digital, and then back. This is an ADC 0804A, an analog to digital converter. And we're gonna put this to use for, our, for my next project. So this is the ADC 0804 analog to digital converter. It's an eight bit analog to digital converter. And it's an older chip, but it works just fine. It's gonna work just fine for my purposes. And so here's a quick tutorial on the chip. It's a 20 pin chip, five volts uh, VCC and the ground uh, to pin um, 10. And so the first two pins in this configuration, if you just want to run it in freestanding mode, first two pins are going to ground. Pin three and five are the, so these are the read pins and the chip select pins. And so chip select and read. Pin three and five, five is the interrupt pin. And pin three is the write pin. I'm not gonna be doing any writing to the chip. Um, pin four is the clock pin. It's got an internal clock. And so the internal clock is uh, functions the same as uh, CD4106. Basically, uh, it's a Schmidt trigger inverter. And so the clock um, resistor pin, which is always on, is pin 19. And I put a 10K resistor between that and pin four, and then a separate 150 picofarad capacitor to ground. And so that generates um, a triangle wave at about a 100 or 1.2 megahertz. And so that's the usual clocking, the internal clock speed using this resistor and this capacitor combination. That, um, without this, without this, you can put an external clock onto pin four. Um, and Pin six is the analog input, and right now, I, for testing purposes, I have it going to a 100K potentiometer, which is uh, configured as a voltage divider between ground and five volts. And so, and I'm, this is just a wire, so I can uh, measure the analog voltage with the oscilloscope at the same time for testing. Um, so, uh, Pin uh, seven is uh, the ground, the uh, reference voltage for the analog. Uh, this is the grounding for the, the reference voltage for the um, digital voltage. And this is the ground uh, on pin 10. Pin nine can be configured as, as I have it not connected to anything right now. And it's basically, um, the uh, half reference voltage uh, or half maximum voltage if you want to configure it to a maximum uh, reading uh, site. And so pin 10 through or pin 11 through 18 are all the, the outputs and I have it going to this little um, makeshift looking uh, LED light sensor. Uh, right now through resistors. And so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna test it. So let's turn it on. I have the potentiometer um, at basically zero volts. And as I increase the potentiometer, um, you could see it lighting up in binary fashion until all eight are lit when I get to the maximum which is five volts. And there it is at the max. If I turn on the um, oscilloscope to measure it, I'm gonna do a combined view. So right now I have it reading at over five volts. And so as I bring this down, you should be able to see the analog input go down and the corresponding digital output goes down in succession. And that's it at zero. So 
So it's a fairly good reading, fairly quick response. Actually, a very quick response. Um, so that should serve our purposes. And now let's test it out using an actual analog audio signal. Just for the fun of it, I decided to slow down the clock of the ADC uh, by using, by changing up this capacitor from 150 picofarad to 10 nanofarad, or to 10 uh, microfarad. And uh, as you can see, it's sampling at a lot lower of a frequency. Basically, if I touch this cable to the resistor, that's the oscilloscope probe, you can see that's the clock. About 15 hertz. Anyway, let me put that back. Let's put the 150 picofarad capacitor back and see what the true clock rate is. 1.2 megahertz. I just fixed the loose connection. Mm, that's about right. 1.2 megahertz is fast. It's a fast uh, ADC running speed. So we're going to do some further testing with the uh, ADC 0804. And uh, basically, this is uh, input signal coming in from a old iPhone with music. Um, right now, the music coming in is, uh, is not on. So let me turn it on. And if I turn it on, I should be able to get a signal here of the, this is what the signal looks like on the oscilloscope. And um, now, if we want to listen to it, this is what it sounds like. Very quiet. If I increase the volume all the way, You get a maximum peak to peak voltage of about two volts with maximum volume. So I don't get copyrighted, I'll stop it. Now, I'm going to take this and put it into the LM386 op amp, uh, which is a single rail op amp, and basically it's going to take, uh, and it's uh, between five volts and ground, and this is the input on it. And now, if I, I don't have any extra gain on it, but now if I put the speaker up onto it and I try it, here it's centered around, um, it should be centered around two and a half volts. Well, I didn't put the oscilloscope probe on it, but let me do that too. And, uh, Actually, before I put the oscilloscope on it, let's listen to the gain of the, there's a gain of 20. Much louder. I have to turn the volume down on this to get it to not be distorted. So now, let me put the oscilloscope probe on it and uh, see what kind of output we get. Um, let me take the speaker out of it because then you won't be able to see the signal. And let's put that on. And now you can see that it's centered around two and a half volts and the VMAX is now going close to five, but it's all staying above zero because it's a single rail op amp. So now when you want to actually listen to the music without distortion, because that sounded all distorted, you generally place a capacitor here, a large capacitor, if you want to use this as an amplifier, and this is what it sounds like, this is what it looks like. 
then it, the capacitor recenters it around the zero volts line. And so that could go out to a speaker without any DC offset. So I'm going to not use the capacitor and I'm going to take that out. And um, I am just going to, um, I am just going to take the output signal uh, from this, which is, which looks like this. It's a little distorted. I have to turn the volume down on it even more. Um, and then I'm going to put that into the input of the ADC. And you get an output. Now these lights look like they're flickering, but they're just basically flickering between zero and um, 4.4 volts very quickly. And so that's our input signal that we're going to digitize. You don't want to feed negative voltage uh, to the ADC0804 um, because you want you want it all positive. You can always put the output if you want to output it to something afterward to center it around zero volts through that big capacitor again. So anyway, let's uh, move on to the next step. This is the same audio signal going into the ADC and then the output of the ADC is putting it out through this R2R ladder, basically a digital to analog converter. And that's the output signal. And if I take the speaker off, you could see the actual waveform. Just to close the loop on the proof of concept here. So I have um, music playing from this old iPhone. Um, and it's getting uh, amplified by this LM386 op amp. The output of that is going into this analog to digital converter, the ADC0804. The output of that is going into those um, LED lights, but at the same time, uh, the output is coming through this R2R digital to analog converter. So uh, to see what kind of final analog signal you get. And um, you can hear it if I plug it in with uh, the speaker here. And it's a nice, quiet little signal. But to truly see if this is working adequately, I have on the oscilloscope, on uh, the yellow curve, the yellow tracing, is the signal, the original analog signal coming from the iPhone. And the blue curve on the bottom is the output of the digital to analog conversion uh, converter the R2R ladder. And um, just to see if the waves or the signals appear to be the same. And um, they sure do. Let me stop it for a second just to see. It looks almost identical. In fact, it is identical. Not even a slight delay here. Let me see if there is a delay. If I go it's cool. You could see the digital to analog conversion here with the steps. Um, and then on top is the original signal. That's pretty neat when you zoom in on it. Uh, let me actually uh, get rid of channel one for a second. And then just see this. And this is the, the signal you're getting, the output from the... Uh, let me stop the tracing and you can see the analog to digital conversion and the digital to analog. So that is the output. But when you listen to it, it sounds, it sounds pretty good. It sounds, it's a pretty accurate reproduction of the actual song. If I ground that speaker properly. It's 
quiet, just needs to go through an amplifier of the output. But let me uh, get the tracing back by unplugging the speaker. Man, it's pretty cool. Um, 20 microsecond steps. It's a pretty fast conversion process.